Today in our 2018 Grand Design Momentum 5th Wheel Toy Hauler, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kodiak Disc Brake Kit with 13 inch hub and rotors. It's going to be part number K2HRCM1337-9DAC. Uh, to help us with our installation, we're also going to be using the replacement trailer hub bearing part number 02475 and the replacement trailer hub bearing part number 25580 and grease seals part number RG06-070. So here's what our brakes look like once we have them installed. And a lot of people are upgrading from drum brakes to disc brakes on their trailer for good reason. Disc brakes are going to stop a lot smoother and perform better even at highway speeds. Drum brakes tend to fade a little bit and not have as much biting force or slowing down to your trailer at high speeds, not to mention there's going to be a lot less maintenance with these disc brakes. Our disc brakes are really only going to have one moving part, and it's going to be the piston inside the caliper here, opposed to drum brakes where they're going to have a lot of different springs and moving parts, so maintenance is going to be cut down quite a bit. Our hub and rotor are going to be integrated together. They're going to be made out of a cast iron, which is going to help dissipate the heat along with the vented design. Our calipers are also going to be made out of cast iron to prevent flexing. And with less flex, it means that torque is actually going to be applied to the brakes, giving us a smoother result every time. The brackets here are also going to be made out of iron, and they're designed to fit a five bolt flange axle. A unique feature of the Kodiak brackets is the way that they're designed. It has this side support, ensuring that the weight is supported on the bracket rather than the bolts themselves. Each component is going to have a dacrement finish on it that's going to help resist corrosion in fresh or salt water environments. It does have a 3 to 400 hour salt spray rating on it. Our brakes are designed to work with 7,000 pound axles and with wheels that are 16 inch or larger. Now the bolt pattern is going to give you an 8 on 6.5 inch, but keep in mind the studs are going to be 9 16 of an inch. And the rotor itself is going to be a full 13 inches. One thing to keep in mind when you go to install these is that the inner and outer bearing as well as the seal is not provided in the kit and it is sold separately and you can pick it up here at eTrailer.com. However, the races for the inner and outer bearing are pre-installed. Our kit is going to come with two brake assemblies, so if you have a tandem axle like we have here, make sure you order two kits. As far as the installation goes, it is going to be rather straightforward because that bracket's going to help out immensely when mounting everything up. So now that we've gone over some of the features and seen the end result, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to have to remove the tires from our fifth wheel. So you want to make sure you lift it up high enough that you can remove them and that it is supported. Next, we're going to have to remove our old brake assembly. So we'll pull off our grease cap and start taking everything apart. I like to get a screwdriver behind the cap rather than hit it directly on so we don't end up damaging it and we'll just work our way around until we can get the cap completely off. With the cap removed, we're gonna to wanna to pull this cotter pin out so we can take all the nuts, washers, and bearings out. Just bend the cotter pin out of the way. And we can loosen up the nut. Now it's a good idea to have a lot of paper towels and gloves so we don't get grease everywhere. And if you can, go ahead and grab it and pull them out so we don't have to worry about them falling on the floor. And we'll grab the outside of the drum and we'll pull it off completely. There may be a little resistance because of the seal that rides on the back here. Our brake assembly is going to be held on by these five nuts here, so we'll grab a 916 socket and pull them out. Once those are removed, you can slightly pull your brake assembly off the studs, however we're still going to have the electrical wires holding it in place. Now, since we're upgrading to hydraulic brakes, we're not going to need these wires. So we can just go ahead and take a pair of cutters and cut them so that we can get the brake assembly off. Then we'll pull the whole assembly off. 
Now it's a good idea to go ahead and clean the spindle. Now we can grab our caliper mounting bracket. Now they're not side specific, but you do want to make sure you have them in the correct orientation. So we're going to have a little imprinted part that says outside. You want that facing towards the wheel or away from the center of our motorhome. And then at the same time, since we're on the left hand side or the driver's side, we want this to be clocked in the three o'clock position to where these two tabs are pointing towards the back. We can take it and we'll slide it and line it up with the studs. It has multi holes, so we'll just slide it directly over. And then we're going to loosely reinstall those nuts that we removed, just so we don't have to worry about it moving or falling off. So make sure it's fully seated against the spindle and there's not a whole lot of slop in there or it's off angle. And then we'll go ahead and snug up all of our hardware. Then we can come back with a torque wrench. We're going to torque our hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. Next, to get our hub and rotor assembly together, we're going to have to put the bearings and seals in. So we can take the larger of the two bearings. We can see that it's going to fit right up to that race that's already pre-installed. And then the seal is going to go on right on top of that. But before we fully install it, we're going to want to pack the bearing with grease. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can do it with a grease packer or you can do it by hand. Now you can see when I'm using a grease packer, you can see the grease starting to get inside the bearing there. Once it's fully packed, you take the bearing out. You just take the excess and kind of put it around the bearing. Make sure it gets all the way in there. It's not so much about the outside, but more of the rollers on the inside. So then we'll take our bearing, we'll drop it down into the rotor. We want to make sure it's seating nice and flat and it's not crooked in there. Clean the excess grease off the edge of the lip there. Then we can take our seal. We're going to place the seal as flat as we can on the edge there. Now again, there's going to be a couple different ways of how you can get this seal in. You can use a seal driver. You want to make sure that you get it nice and flat on there and use the driver to push it in. But if you don't have a driver that's going to be that size, you can use a piece of wood that's a little bit bigger than the seal itself. That way, once it hits the bottom edge, it'll stop at the rotor. You just want to make sure you periodically check. Once you have the seal all the way in, you can kind of go around and feel where it's seated and kind of adjust the block of wood and where you're hitting to make sure it's nice and flush. Now the smaller bearing is going to be for the front or the outside of the rotor. So we'll go ahead and pack it, but we're not going to put it inside the hub and rotor assembly just yet. You want to make sure you get that grease to go all the way through the bearing and it's nice and full. Now we can take our hub and rotor assembly. We're going to slide it onto the spindle. You have a little bit of resistance when it gets back, but you want to make sure that it's fully seated on there and it's as far back as you can get it. We'll take our outer bearing. We're going to slide that in place. And that'll kind of help center the rotor as well. Then just like when we disassembled it, We'll put the flat washer over, and then we'll take our castle nut and put it in place. Now, after you tighten this up, it is important. You want to go ahead and replace the cotter pin and not reuse the one because after bending them a couple times, they can break. So after you have your cotter pin in place, you want to go ahead and fill up the rest of the grease here at the end if you have an easy loop axle. So we're going to grab our caliper now. And you'll notice that on the back side, we're going to have two bleeders as well as the input for our brake line. So it's not going to matter how we orient it, but you want to make sure that the bleeders and the line valve is on the inside. We're going to have two holes right here. These are going to line up with the 
holes that are on our bracket that we installed earlier. Now there is gonna be a little bit of interference here because of our leaf spring. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take the bottom bolt, I'm gonna partially put it in, just enough so I have a pivot. And then at the same time, I'll take my top bolt, I'll swing my caliper down far enough so that I can get the bolt in just to where it's gonna clear and not make contact with the bracket, swing everything up Get it all lined up, and then we can get the bolt started by hand to keep everything in place. And keep in mind, you may need to kind of shift it around to get the bolt holes to line up perfectly, but that way we don't have to worry about the leaf spring interfering with getting the bolt in. And you want to come back with a half inch socket or wrench and tighten up those bolts till they're nice and snug. You want to come back and you make sure that you torque your caliper guide bolts to the amount specified in the instructions. So now we can put our cap back on. It is threaded, so you don't want to just smash it on like a grease cap. And just put it on until it's nice and snug. With this one done, we're going to go ahead and repeat that for all of our other brake assemblies. Once they're all installed, you're going to want to hook up all the lines and bleed the brakes according to the manufacturer for your actuator. That'll finish up your look at the Kodiak disc brake kit with 13 inch hub and rotors, part number K2HRCM1337-9DAC on our 2018 Grand Design Momentum fifth wheel toy hauler.